the carpet to the edge of the uh, the uh, field cover to cover this. Uh, well, no, no, no. I meant like it to the end there it would show people where to walk. Oh, right, yeah. and because that also gets. That's right. The flowers. So where are you going to be? Right there. Thank you. No. Yeah, no. 
if we get any more moisture, it's going to get Right. Of course, it's the right. That was the right. It's the right thing to do. Those fan cords should be all set now. Okay, thank you so much.
guys. Uh, I get that too. Look at this back. The guys in the tent? The guys in the tent? Yeah. Where's that? It's back uh, there? Back there. I'll find them. Thank you. Got the seats up there. How you doing? How are you? Good job yesterday.
where the presenter is going to kind of be. So if you step that way, there you go. Hold on, I have my flash. What did you have your flash on? So I'm gonna, I'm farther away than you, so I'm gonna take my settings down a bit. You guys come a little closer, you're like 10 miles away. <laughs> Are you able to get your shot from where I'm at out on the turf? Um, are you fine? Okay. Can you make the shot that's okay? Yeah, you're okay. taller than me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
feels good, doesn't it?
President McMahon and members of the Board of Trustees, the candidates have now assembled for the 2020 commencement exercises at Kettering University. Thank you, Professor Zeng. Faculty, staff, students, alumni, honored guests, family, friends, welcome and good morning. The 112th commencement exercises of Kettering University will now begin. Please remain standing and remove your caps for the singing of the national anthem today, performed by Ms. Larissa Buckingham, a member of the Kettering University class of 2020. Hi, Larissa. Thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glow, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Oh, the land of the free and the home of the Thank you very much, Laura. Guests, now please be seated. I now want to take this moment to introduce members of our faculty who have played a key role in the academic lives of the degree candidates who now stand before me. Together with the members of our staff, they contribute in many ways to the intellectual and personal growth of our students and they have facilitated the achievements we are recognizing today. They wear many hats, professor, advisor, mentor, while contributing to the academic and professional and personal growth of our students. At this time, I would like to recognize the representatives of the faculty who are in attendance, as well as any members of the staff who are present. Please, be, please stand and be recognized. Thank you, please be seated. I now introduce members of the platform party. I ask each to please stand as their names are called and remain standing to be recognized. Please hold your applause until everyone has been introduced. Representing the Kettering University Board of Trustees, Elizabeth Artisana, Chair, Walter Borst, Vice Chair, Carla Bello, Bruce Coventry, Phil Dutcher, Chuck Gray, Gerald Johnson, David Kazak, Michelle McAdory, and Marjorie Sorge. Representing our faculty, Dr. Greg Hoff, Dean of the College of Engineering, Dr. Scott Reeve, Dean of Graduate School and Research, Dr. Hasib Ahmed, Dean of the School of Management, 
Dr. Catherine Savinarich, Associate Provost for Assessment, Academic Support, and Dean of the College of Sciences and Liberal Arts. Dr. Paul Zhang, Professor of Mechanical Engineering in the College of Engineering and Faculty Senate Moderator in 2020. Dr. Babak Alahi, Liberal Studies Department Head. Dr. Michael Farmer, Computer Science Department Head. Dr. Lesek Garwaski, Mathematics Department Head. Dr. Scott Grassman, Industrial and Manufacturing Engineering Department Head. Dr. Daniel Ludwigson, Head of the Physics Department. Dr. Basam Ramadan, Mechanical Engineering Department. Dr. Stacy Seeley, Chemistry and Biochemistry Department Head. And Dr. Mark Thompson, Electrical and Computer Engineering Department Head. Representing our leadership, Dr. James Zhang, Provost and Senior Vice President of Academic Affairs. Tom Ayers, Vice President of Administration and Finance. Sue Davies, Vice President for University Advancement and External Relations. Dr. L.B. McCune, Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students. Don Rockwell, Kettering University Council. Viola Sprague, Vice President for Instructional, Administrative and Information Technology. And Dr. Christine Wallace, Vice President for Kettering Global. Thank you, please be seated. It is my pleasure now to introduce Ms. Elizabeth Artisana, Chair of the Kettering University Board of Trustees, who brings greetings from the Board of Trustees and who will officially proclaim open these commencement exercises. Chairwoman Artisana. Thank you, Dr. McMahon, and good morning to everybody. It is my honor to be addressing you this morning and to have the opportunity to extend the congratulations and best wishes after what has been a, as you've heard many times, a year like any, unlike any other year. But best wishes and congratulations from the Board of Trustees to our graduates and to the families who have supported them. We're here to honor the commitment of these graduates and the many, many people in their lives who helped them and supported them through this educational process. It is what is clearly the finest institution in the country. Graduates, we hope, our hope is that your experiences at Kettering will lead you to a lifelong network of not only meaningful relationships and friendships with, that you've made with your classmates and the faculty, but with all of the alumni and others that are associated with the university. By joining the alumni ranks of this institution today, you become part of an immense professional and social network that will truly benefit you throughout your lives. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I would like to pledge our support to the graduates, students, faculty, and staff and administration to continue to support the best possible education at Kettering University. I would also like to express my personal congratulations to all of the graduates and their families on this memorable day. Thank you very much. Our valedictory to the university will be presented by Emily Poirier. Today, she is receiving both her bachelor's and master's degrees. Emily, would you please come forward? Kettering University faculty, staff, family, friends, and fellow graduates. Hello, and welcome to Kettering University's Class of 2020 Commencement Ceremony. Thank you all for being here today. And thank you for being advocates for us every step along the way. 
We have all leaned on our friends, family, mentors, and professors to get us here. Whether that was moving boxes with us every three months, building us up after a bad grade, or staying calm as you explain the same concept to us for the sixth time, your encouragement means more to us than you can ever know. Graduates, this is our day. What an honor to be gathered here with such highly intelligent and capable individuals, finally. We truly have waited a long time for this, haven't we? From the long nights in club lib and the D spaces to that always too early alarm for 8 a.m. classes, these last four and a half years have all been in anticipation for this very moment. From studying for AP tests in high school to get into Kettering, to studying for that last final exam to get out of Kettering, I can truly see how every person in this room has grown in this time. And of course, anxiously awaiting the long months until we could walk across this stage in June, I mean October, I mean June, we're finally here. 630 days later for some of us. You see, we are a unique set of graduates. In just the first year of our postgraduate or professional careers, we experienced something that very few others have. Some of us were put on furlough. Some of us lost our jobs. Some of us were just about to accept a new position when it all got stripped away from us. Whatever your situation, this last year did prove one thing. Bulldogs persevere. Bulldogs take a once in a century pandemic and turn it into opportunity. Some took this time to change careers, start your own business, pursue another degree, or maybe even just do that one task that you've been putting off for a while. Bulldogs don't give up when life gets hard. They push through, they embrace, they progress, they persevere. We are a memorable set of graduates, also for reasons outside of our rare predicament. We are unique because of the diverse skill sets, experiences, and perspectives that this groups bring to the table. In this very stadium, I see future CEOs, doctors, lawyers, directors, inventors, professors, and entrepreneurs. But the capabilities of this class go well beyond their professional achievements. In this stadium, I also see leaders, activists, collaborators, visionaries, mentors, and philanthropists. Each one of us graduates has had a distinct journey which gave us the tools to achieve success thus far. And I know that each and every one of you will continue to excel as you advance along your own path. Now, as a part of this speech, I'm supposed to stand up here and pose a challenge to all the graduates. But quite frankly, I don't see how I can challenge such a tenaciously ambitious group of individuals who seek challenge in every bend in the road, who take disasters and turn them into opportunity, who take heinous inequalities and injustices and turn it into a message of hope and change, who take failure and turn it into motivation, doubt into courage, uncertainty into determination. How am I supposed to stand up here and challenge you? The answer is simple. I cannot challenge you. You must challenge yourself. Keep reaching higher and achieving that next goal. Keep striving to develop into a better version of yourself. Continue to do exactly what got you to this spot here. Stay open-minded to change. 
adapt as new realities come your way, aspire for a better future, take action, speak up, be accountable, educate yourself, be optimistic, think outside the box, make the world a better place, and most importantly, be respectful and kind to one another. As we all step out of this stadium, let's take a moment to reflect upon ourselves. Let's think about our positions in life and reevaluate our trajectories. Take some time to consider who we are and who we want to be. The next step in our lives that we have been waiting for is here and now. What are you going to do with it? Congratulations to all the 2020 graduates. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. 2020 was the first year of Kettering's next century. We broke ground on the Learning Commons in February of that year. Full of hope and inspiration for what will be the epicenter of our campus. A collaborative and unique facility that exemplifies what it truly means to be Kettering built. And then a coronavirus forced us all to pivot. Innovation and collaboration in higher ed took on new meanings as we faced together a global pandemic. We transitioned to remote work and hybrid learning in a matter of weeks. We established safety protocols and guidelines for our campus. We stayed connected face to face and virtually and we now see the bright light at the end of this long, challenging year. Throughout 2020, there have been many that turned the challenges of this past year into opportunities. Opportunities to work, to innovate, and to give back to those in need during this time. From the frontline workers and hospitals and healthcare to restaurant workers and business owners who shifted to accommodate a stay-at-home customer, and the scientists and engineers who spent endless hours researching ways to keep us safe. Whether it be sewing masks or designing PPE or working at a local food bank or a testing facility, members of the Kettering community, students, faculty, alumni, staff, all stepped up. Today, we will hear from one of our Kettering family, a man who embodies that innovative spirit, that tenacity, and that compassion. Someone who is not only a proud alumnus, but an advocate for this institution as a member of the Board of Trustees. He is also a powerful voice and talented leader. At once was his co-op while he was a Kettering student, and now his employer, General Motors. In fact, another one of our graduates, Mary Barra, CEO of General Motors, said this about him, and I quote, his leadership and steadfast integrity have made General Motors a better company, unquote. As executive vice president of global manufacturing at GM, he has many responsib responsibilities and uh, roles in the company, including ensuring for quality, and safety performance for 103,000 employees, representing more than 129 manufacturing facilities on five continents and 16 countries. And in response to COVID-19, he stepped up. When production at GM was temporarily suspended at the beginning of the pandemic, he and his team worked across the company to a effectively and quickly shift manufacturing and engineering resources to ventilators and mask production for frontline health workers. He is credited with spearheading the company's robust safety protocols and return to work strategies that made it possible to safely reopen GM plants and other operations. 
He has also been recognized for his role as an inaugural member of GM's Inclusion Advisory Board to improve diversity and inclusion throughout the company. Gerald, as a sitting member of the Board of Trustees, the bylaws of the university prevent us from awarding you an honorary degree today, but I can think of no one who deserves it more. You are by every definition what it means to be Kettering built. I am deeply honored to introduce from the class of 1985, Mr. Gerald Johnson. Thank you, Dr. McMahon, for that wonderful introduction. Hello and good morning. I'm honored to be invited to participate in your commencement ceremony today. So to President McMahon, Chair Artisana, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty and distinguished guests, I thank you for your trust and the risk you are willing to take to have me address the class of 2020. More importantly, I want to start by saying congratulations to our most distinguished guests, the graduates, the graduating class of 2020. Again, I am thrilled to join with family and friends to acknowledge and celebrate your achievement. And as President McMahon stated, I once sat where you sit. And while it has been a long time and longer than I may care to admit, I know Kettering. It is a prestigious, rigorous, and arduous institution of higher learning. I am sure you earned this moment. Class of 2020 will be marked with words like tenacity, resilience, and adaptability. Again, I'm sure you earned this moment. This is your day, and I promise I'll only take a small portion of it. I do recall the great pride I felt upon my own graduation, just as I'm sure you are rightfully feeling today. I've been to more than my fair share of commencement services, and I've sat where you sit twice. I've attended two more sitting on the dais. And just a brief personal note, my wife and I have seven children to date, and we have attended four graduations as parents and two more as godparents. Now, let's say I may know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. Now, I suppose all of you have seen at one time or another the Hotels.com commercial featuring Captain Obvious. So let me get some of the obvious things out of the way. I am supposed to make sure you're aware that the world is changing. I'm supposed to make you aware that the rate of change is accelerating and we are in the midst of one of the greatest technological revolutions in the history of mankind. I'm to tell you that nothing will be given to you because it's only through perseverance and hard work that you'll make your mark. Oh, and yes, I'm supposed to also make sure you know you are the most brilliant graduating class in the history of Kettering. Well, maybe excluding the stalwarts of uh, the class of 85. Now, all of these statements are true. They were true when I graduated. They will be true when one of you are standing here addressing the class 20 years from now. They were true 100 years ago. They'll be true a hundred years from now. Change, progress, innovation, and discovery are what we do as mankind. So the revelation is not that there is change taking place all around us. The real epiphany is the realization that you and I are the change and are drivers of that change. Bear with me for one second. If you Google the seven greatest technological wonders in the history of the world, you'll get this list. The Hubble Space Telescope, the International Space Station, the Artificial Pacemaker, the Mars Rover, Magnetic Resonance Imaging, the Global Positioning System, and the Voyager spacecraft. I don't disagree with the significance of these inventions and breakthroughs. They are marvels in their own right, but I do contend the greatest technological wonder in the history of mankind is mankind itself. Five of these seven technologies are designed to help us understand, navigate, and appreciate far-flung places and planets. The other two wonders allow us to keep a heart beating and to capture images from deep inside the human body. 
magnificent discoveries, life-saving technologies. President McMahon did tell you I graduated from the Industrial Administration Program. That means I may have had a humanities class or two more than you. My challenge into this class, 2020, is to remember to navigate and appreciate where you are, the people you are with, the communities you are a part of, and the planet you are a steward of. And yet, here again, I want to challenge you to see the wonder and value in the people around you whose hearts will inevitably stop beating one day. And let's not believe that powerful magnets which excite the protons in our bodies to enable us to see an image of what's inside can replace or be more valuable than conversations with and even silences we share with another person. The changes in technology will affect our lives, but they should not become our lives or replace human connection. The greatest challenge and the greatest opportunity then of your generation is not artificial intelligence. It's the real and even emotional intelligence. It is not the infinite potential of gene editing. And parents, you thought you were shocked by tattoos. This generation will be absolutely blown away by what their children would do with gene editing. Rather, it's a realization that each of us is unique, valuable, and deserving just the way we are. So what's real ch really challenging us? According to the World Economic Forum Global Survey of Adults Age 18 to 35, the top seven challenges to our society include climate change and destruction of nature, large-scale conflict or war, inequality, poverty, government, government transparency and accountability, religious conflict, and food and water security. I will not walk through these individually, but they can be grouped into two categories, how we value and appreciate our planet and how we value and appreciate each other. As you head out to greet these challenges, you will grow and you will gain knowledge and experience both professionally and personally. But here's some advice. For every technological advancement that you, the leader of or party to, consider the anthropological contribution you can also make. If I could be Captain Obvious one more time, before you and I became degree technologists, innovators, engineers, future leaders of industry, we were, we are, people. The family and friends in the audience crying and cheering for your accomplishment are doing it for a person they care about who also just happens to be a computer scientist, a biochemist, or an operations expert. After the more than a year of unprecedented upheaval from COVID-19, continuing inequities in our society and ever-present climate threats, we are at a crossroad. Call it an inflection point. A moment in time in history where things change, not just technologically, but again, anthropologically. I say this too on June, Juneteenth, a day on which black Americans celebrate emancipation and freedom. And one that I'm thrilled to say is now a national holiday, thanks to Congress pushing through the National Independence Day Act and President Biden signing it into law. I don't know if there's ever been or ever will be a class that has their commencement day declared a national holiday, but you have that distinction. By coincidence or providence, your commencement will be remembered and celebrated as a day of liberty and equality. Liberty for all of us to express our brilliance and equally and more importantly even to enable others to express theirs. It's important recognition for the significance of June 19, 1865, and it underscores its increased prominence for everyone who realizes the stakes in the ongoing struggle for equality and inclusion. There are many facets for the least of which is overcoming the educational inequities that disproportionately affect many low income and minority communities. This could put kids at a disadvantage as early as age or class third grade. Now I want you to remember being nine, year old, nine years old again. Your career choices were doctor or dinosaur. The point is we weren't really thinking about it at all, nor should we have. We were completely at the mercy of adults in our lives, parents, aunts, teachers, coaches, older siblings, or anyone close enough to care. That could be any one of us here today. 
being one close enough to care. All of us must, we have the opportunity to address these disadvantages early in life to position children for a more prosperous future. Engineering is a field for everyone and the opportunities in STEM related career paths are almost limitless. And that means it's vitally important that everyone is part of the fundamental changes occurring today. I'd like to commend the CEO of General Motors, Mary Barr, a Kettering alumni herself and the first female CEO of an automotive company for leading us to do our part in support of educational initiatives targeting STEM curriculums for children as early as second grade. And right here at Kettering, the longstanding successful AIM program helping students of color make a more successful transition from high school to college. For almost 40 years, it has helped to increase the number of underrepresented students in the pursuit of engineering and management degrees by identifying academic strengths and weaknesses prior to entering college and helping them build the self-discipline necessary to succeed. I'm proud of my contributions to AIM over the years, and I hope some of you will also in the future. Additionally, Kettering, Light's pre-college program helps female students pursue STEM in college, including scholarships, while eight additional student organizations and 20 other diversity endowments are available to either students of color and or female students. It's all a part of a network of support here at Kettering that is making a difference in driving change. You will make a difference, but it won't be enough to simply be a great engineer or technologist. Your measure will also rely on your citizenship. They will be linked. They have to be linked. Graduating class of 2020, you are smarter than all the classes before you. You will continue the ever increasing pace of technology. You will redefine convenience and possibilities through those technologies. There are patents, innovations, technological breakthroughs sitting in the minds of each of you. Of this fact, I am certain. Kettering has hardened you, tested you, and prepared you. You will step onto that stage like the many great classes and students that have gone before you. And in all that change and marvel, let's hold on to some things that will and should never change. Family and friends are your greatest gift. Truth, compassion, and patience are still virtues. And you are a technological wonder as every human being you are fortunate enough to encounter. Class of 2020, I congratulate you. You are a technological wonder you will be an anthropological wonder. Thank you and Godspeed on your journey to just being good human beings. Thank you. Marvelous. Thank you very much. Those are wonderful remarks. Thank you, Gerald. Dr. Zhang will now begin the presentation of graduate degrees to our master's degree candidates. Dr. Zhang. Thank you, President McMahon. At this time, I invite the Dean of the Graduate School and Research, Dr. Scott Reed, to present the candidates for graduate degrees from the Graduate School. Will all candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Lean Manufacturing, Master of Business Administration, Master of Science in Engineering Management, Master of Science in Operations Management, Master of Science in Supply Chain Management, and Master of Science in Engineering, please stand and remain standing. President McMahon, the individuals now presented to you are candidates for Master of Science or Master of Business Administration degrees. At the request of the faculty and on their behalf, I am proud to present these candidates for the conferring of those degrees. Thank you, Dean Reeve. I now ask all faculty to stand and remain standing in support of these graduates 
and as confirmation of their meeting the rigorous standards set forth by this university. I now ask all Kettering alumni present today in the faculty, on the platform, or in the audience to stand and remain standing as witness to the conferral of these degrees and the acceptance of these students into the ranks of loyal alumni. They, they moved down there. So I face this way, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Kettering University, I confer upon you the degree for which you have satisfied requirements and declare you entitled to all the rights, honors, and special privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. With the exception of our degree recipients, you may be seated. Degree recipients, well, as you are, please remain standing. Will the marshals please direct the master's degree candidates to come forward where they will be hooded and receive the diplomas from President McMahon. And congratulations from Dr. Scott Reeve, Dean of the Graduate School and Research. After exiting the stage, graduates should return to the seats and be seated. from the Graduate School and Sponsored Research candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Lean Manufacturing. Christopher George Ascoyan. Joshua Nicholas Ghetto. Ramon Andres Cordero. From the School of Management, candidates for the degree of Master of Business Administration. Phyllis Denae Green. Janae Green. Greg Pifko. From the School of Management, candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Engineering Management, Nathan Richard Wilson Eller. Emily Joelle Poyer. Reshmi Priya Ponavalavan. Amod Kumar Singh. Nishta M. Patel. Sharath Seth. Yana Ryanan. From the College of Engineering, candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Engineering, Sawan Adeshra. Shireen Banu Idara. Charles William Gates. Hey, 
Daniel Mark Shada. Yashpal Singh Gower. Tirith Chintan Shah. Abhishek Samir Chawan. Yugal Anil Narong. Anand Krishna Sarma. Devik Jadis Joshi. Santosh Sivan Kathiresan. Prathamesh Satish Kade. Abhinandan Vijay Raut. Kedar Satish Rege. Ajinkya Abhijit Joshi. Sushant Ramdas Jagtap. McMahon, all candidates for graduate degrees have now been presented. Thank you. Congratulations to all our master's degree candidates. We now pre proceed with the presentation of our undergraduate degrees. But before we do, it is my pleasure to recognize those undergraduates who have achieved special academic and institutional honors. I will begin with traditional academic honors. Kettering indicates grade point averages, GPAs of course, on a 4.0 scale. I will introduce three groups of bachelor degree candidates who have achieved special academic honor status. First, those candidates for degrees who have a cumulative GPA between 3.5 and 3.69 will be graduating cum laude. Will all of our cum laude graduates please stand and be recognized? Thank you, you may be seated. Next, degree candidates who have a cumulative GPA between 3.7 and 3.89 will be graduating magna cum laude. Would you please stand and be recognized? Thank you, you may be seated. And finally, degree candidates who have a cumulative GPA of 3.9 3.9 and higher will be graduating summa cum laude. Would you please stand and be recognized? Thank you. You may be seated.
Congratulations. Yesterday, in a separate ceremony, we recognized students who will graduate today, summa cum laude. We also recognize students who have received one or more special institutional honors. The names of the recipients of these honors are listed on the institutional honors page of your commencement program. Will those who have been designated President's Medalists please rise. <laughs> President's Medalists have exhibited extraordinary professionalism and job performance with a corporate sponsor, demonstrated outstanding scholarship, and have made notable contributions to Kettering, Greater Flint, and their home communities. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. May I be seated? Those who have been designated SOBI scholars, please stand and be recognized. This honor carries the name of Albert Sobey, the founder and first president of Kettering University. Sobey scholars exemplify an outstanding combination of scholarship and leadership. Congratulations. Thank you, you may be seated. Will the recipient of the Outstanding Thesis Award please rise? This award recognizes exceptional performance in Kettering's senior thesis project. Candidates for this award must have received a grade of pass with distinction on their theses and be nominated by their faculty advisors. A committee of faculty members reviews the nominations, evaluates the theses, and selects the winner. Congratulations to our thesis award winner. And now would all the recipients of institutional honors please rise again together. Congratulations to you all. Thank you. You may be seated. Dr. Zhang will now begin the presentation of bachelor's degrees. Thank you, President McMahon. After all these years, when I hear that line 3.9 and above, still gives me goosebumps. How do you guys do it? At this time, I invite the Dean of the College of Engineering, Dr. Craig Hoff, to present the candidates for degrees from the College of Engineering. Will all the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, Bachelor of Science of Industrial Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering, and Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering, please stand and remain standing. President McMahon, the individuals now presented to you are candidates for the Bachelor of Science degrees from the College of Engineering. At the request of the faculty and on their behalf, I am proud to present these candidates for the conferring of those degrees. All candidates from the College of Engineering, please remain standing. At this time, I invite the Dean of the College of Sciences and Liberal Arts, Dr. Catherine Savenerich, to present the candidates for degrees from the College of Sciences and Liberal Arts. From the Colleges of Science and Liberal Arts, will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Applied Biology, Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry, Bachelor of Science in Chemistry, Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, Bachelor of Science in Applied Physics, Bachelor of Science in Engineering Physics, and Bachelor of Science in Applied Mathematics. Please stand and remain standing. President McMahon, 
The individuals now presented to you are candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree from the College of Science and Liberal Arts. At the request of the faculty and on their behalf, I am proud to present these, present these candidates for the conferring of these degrees. All candidates from the College of Engineering and the College of Sciences and Liberal Arts, please remain standing. At this time, I invite the Dean of the School of Management, Dr. Hasib Ahmed, to present the candidates for degrees from the School of Management. From the, <clears throat> from the School of Management, will all candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Business Administration please stand and remain standing. <laughs> President McMahon, the individuals now presented to you are candidates for Bachelor of Science degrees from the School of Management. At the request of the faculty and on, be on their behalf, I'm proud to present these candidates for conferring of those degrees. Thank you, Dr. Zhang and deans. I now ask all faculty to stand and remain standing in support of these graduates and as confirmation of their meeting, the rigorous standards set forth by this university. I now ask all Kettering University alumni present today in the faculty, on the platform, or in the audience to stand and remain standing as witness to the conferral of these degrees and the acceptance of these students into the ranks of loyal alumni. Members of the class of 2020, by virtue of the authority vested in me, by the Board of Trustees of Kettering University, I confer upon you the degree for which you have satisfied requirements and declare you entitled to all of the rights, honors, and special privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. With the exception of the mechanical engineering degree candidates, you may be seated. At the request of the dean and under the direction of the faculty marshals, the respective groups of graduates will now approach the platform where the president will congratulate each graduate and present them with their diplomas. The graduates will then cross the stage and receive congratulations from their dean and department head. Graduates should then exit the stage, return to the seats, and be seated. Please note that those students graduating summa cum laude wear medals. Students graduating magna cum laude or cum laude wear the gold cord. Some graduates are also wearing special symbols denoting their membership in academic honor societies. Dr. Denise Stadola, Associate Professor of Communications in the Department of Liberal Studies, will be reading the graduates' names. The marshals will help direct the candidates. With Madeline degree... Grace Martin. No, not yet. Will the degree candidates from the Department of Mechanical Engineering in the College of Engineering please step forward as their names are called? They are led by Dr. Basim Ramadan, head of the department. Madeline Grace Martin. Jeffrey Paul Ailing. Yeah. 
Connor Reed Bump. Luke Michael Strunk. Karen Rose Bennett. Larissa Corain Buckingham. Kyle Austin Breckenridge. Miguel Napoleon Sanchez. Cody Dunning. Landon Patrick Rapoon. Cum laude. Megan Beverly Mooring, cum laude. Bethany Ann Shira. Megan Elizabeth Cox, summa cum laude. Kendall Christine Klingler. Joshua James Nelson, cum laude. Austin Edward Belke. Robert Stephen Ditsazi, magna cum laude. Mitchell Jeffrey Walser. Carlos Sanchez Lopez, magna cum laude. Jacob Thomas Rye. Zachary Scott McKay. Nicholas Allen Sherba, cum laude. Logan Matthew Luttrell, cum laude. Paul Stevens. Robert Kenneth McMahon III, cum laude. James Lewis Alexander McMahon, summa cum laude. John Anthony Kish III. Joel Aaron Hurd, magna cum laude. Anthony Edward Becca, Becker, magna cum laude. Brendan Michael Pease, cum laude. Colin Patrick Donar. Austin Frederick Gillum, cum laude. Danielle Christine Heron. Christopher George Martini. Carl Amadeus Zometa. Matthew McKay. Oliver Michael Swain. Harold Jacob Arterberry. Alex Spear. Kyle James Albertus. Isabella Angelique Barrett, summa cum laude, also receiving a BS degree in industrial engineering. Hannah Ring Shoemaker. Grace Sophia Slasinski, summa cum laude. Joyce Iran He, cum laude. Chandler Hamilton Laramore, magna cum laude. Isaac Matthew Reese. Thomas Edward Nipola. 
Matthew Daniel Donar. The following, the following degree candidates participating in today's ceremony via live stream and is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, magna cum laude, Mariah Lee Titsworth. Will the degree candidates from the Department of Industrial Engineering and the College of Engineering please step forward as their names are called. They are led by Dr. Scott Grassman, head of the department. Noel Elaine, oh, he did it again. <laughs> Noel Elaine Streetman, Eric Michael Townsend Rickabaugh, Shrima Kota. Oops. Okay. Will the degree candidates from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering in the College of Engineering please step forward as their names are called. They are led by Dr. Mark Thompson, head of the department. Andrew Liam Campbell, magna cum laude. Joshua James Barber, cum laude. Alan Sam Joes, cum laude. Eric Martin Pinna, cum laude. Christian Antonio Balmaceda, magna cum laude. Andrew Joseph Marison. Jeremy Carlin Gronauer. Chelsea Taylor Carter, cum laude. Matthew S. Schalk, also receiving a BS degree in computer science. Olivia Catherine Wanless, summa cum laude, honors program. Michaela J. Benson, summa cum laude, also receiving a BS degree in mechanical engineering. Miley Elizabeth Wise, also receiving a BS degree in mechanical engineering. Kevin James Schwartz, magna cum laude. The following degree candidate is participating in today's ceremony via live stream, live stream and is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering, Anthony Michael Calufo II. Will the degree candidates from the Department of Applied Biology, Biochemistry, Chemistry, and Chemical Engineering in the Colleges of Science and Liberal Arts please step forward as their names are called. They are led by Dr. Stacy Seeley, head of the department. Allison Lee Seeley, summa cum laude. Dayan Ghani, Kira Nicole Miller, magna cum laude, also receiving a BS degree in chemical engineering. Rebecca Marie Miller, magna cum laude. Tyler Allen Duff, cum laude, also receiving a BS degree in chemical engineering. 
Reese, Nello, Troya, magna cum laude. Mitchell, David, Hall. Mackenzie, Rico, Wynn, cum laude. Sarah, Pauline, Roberts. Christina Marie Wark, cum laude, also receiving a BS degree in mechanical engineering. Andrew Thomas Hallad, cum laude. Marina Lynn Gerhardt, cum laude. The following degree candidate is participating in today's ceremony via live stream and is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Applied Physics and Applied Mathematics, Garrett James Diamond. Will the degree candidates from the Department of Computer Science in the College of Science and Liberal Arts please step forward as their names are called. They are led by Dr. Michael Farmer, head of the department. Nicholas Reno, magna cum laude. Thesara Pramod Widjisundera. Rachel, Rachel Taylor Brundage Cum Laude, also receiving a BS degree in computer engineering. Asmita Sani, Summa Cum Laude. Brant Jared Burton Henry, Magna Cum Laude. Donovan Dylan Porter. Don't mind. <laughs> I have more people. <laughs> Will the degree candidates from the Department of Physics? No? Okay. She was not able to come today. Rania Ann Fannis, summa cum laude. Will the degree candidates from the Department of Business in the School of Management please step forward as the names are called? They are led by Larry Navare, faculty member in the department. Rania. Uh, Rania Ann Fanus. Anastasia Vang. Emily Ann Kerberski, cum laude. Ashley Rhonda Weber, magna cum laude. Kayla Jean McMullen. The following degree candidate is participating in today's ceremony via live stream and is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Applied Physics and Applied Mathematics, Garrett James Diamond. President McMahon, all candidates for undergraduate degrees have now been presented. Thank you. Will all of our graduates please stand and be congratulated. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Thank you, please be seated. As this is commencement, this is also my last opportunity to talk to you as students and to share a bit of my hopes and desires for you as you leave the university today. First, let me again offer you my congratulations to those who have been here and to those who have been there with you along this way. 
to your parents, to your family, to your friends. And I, as you see, as the parents of two sons in this graduating class, doubly appreciate this day. I congratulate on all of you on reaching it as well. This is our first commencement in Atwood in many, many years, since 1961, in fact. So other than living through history in the making over the past year, and as our commencement speaker, Joe, pointed out, the first to be on a declared, on the declared national holiday, happy Juneteenth, and to, uh, as, as well, other than living through history in the making, in this way, you're a class of many firsts. I thank all those who have worked so hard to pivot successfully to this venue and make today's celebrations possible. Right up to the beginning of the ceremony, we're still having to navigate ever-changing state and local edicts. So in the end, we're a little rusty. We haven't done commencement in a while. We're delighted to be doing commencement again. We hope we got today mostly right. And if we didn't, we will do better. And I'm sure we'll hear about it on social. Commencement is my favorite day in the life of the university and perhaps our most treasured tradition. I know many colleagues share this sentiment. Commencement is a celebration, a celebration of accomplishment, a celebration of achievement, and the making of an important milestone in your lives. It is a time both of looking forward and reflecting on the past. It is a time of beginning and of parting, of leaving one's place and phase of life and of expectations and of beginning new adventures. It is also a time of great pride where I have a chance to express to you on behalf of the faculty, staff, alumni, in fact, on behalf of all members of the Kettering community, our admiration for what you have accomplished. Sitting in this place, especially, we feel the full measure of the import of what is now our common history. This great university was erected by visionary men and women who understood long before many and long before it was in vogue the demands of a technological century in which we now live. These are the people who laid the foundation upon which your achievements today rest and upon which we must all strive to build. It is a humbling past, it is an ennobling past, and it is a significant past. Indeed, in the history of this university, it's constituted an enduring, unique, and remarkable legacy that has been entrusted to all of us by those who came before us. And it is a legacy of which you are now a part. Today, we celebrate your joy in the journey to this day, indeed, to this very moment. And although you have earned degrees spanning many disciplines, and you follow individual stars that will take you in many directions, you share in common the accomplishment of having succeeded at some of the most demanding and rigorous programs of study in our country. Today in particular though, we also celebrate your resilience, for you have accomplished this feast while also navigating the ravages, disruptions, and restrictions of a global crisis. You now know what it feels like to live in history in the making in real time. And while we have done this together and ultimately successfully, through the struggle and loss that we have experienced, we have also come to appreciate more dearly the truly important things in our life. Through these disruptions, you have had time to reflect on figure out what you really believe and what you value. You have also seen that heroes exist all around us not just in films or history books. You have witnessed and even committed acts of bravery and sacrifice. You have had to assess and manage risk and the consequences of the risks you take to those who are precious around you. This latter point is important because taking considered risk and actively managing that risk is a critical component of creation and innovation, in fact, of progress. As a university community, we have done this and done it well over the past year. We were among the earliest universities to resume face-to-face -face instructions and among the most successful in the country at managing the challenges we faced. 
even though we were located in one of the most deeply impacted areas of the country. We were able to be successful and to work to help those in our community to ultimately be so as well because of how we came together as a community. And, to, and then to manage the, and assess the risks of our actions in the face of a set of rap, rapidly evolving challenges. We didn't shrink from those challenges or play it perfectly safe because there really is no such thing. We made hard choices sometimes and sometimes unpopular ones. We managed conflicting guidance, but we did not abdicate responsibility to others. We led. Is it starting to rain? I didn't see this. Okay, so it's not going to hold off on us. So, given that it's raining, I will say, you may be intensely proud of being a graduate of this university. I will miss you. Even on the Zoom Brady box, I will miss you, but I look forward to seeing you as alumni. I wish you good health, prosperity, contentment, and self-fulfillment. Godspeed to all of you. And at this time, I would like to ask all of you to rise. It is my distinct pleasure to congratulate you on your achievement and ask that you now move your tassels from right to left. Will the audience please join me in congratulating our newest graduates. Thanks to all of you who have joined us today in sharing this momentous occasion in the life of our university. Please remain at your seats until the academic procession and the graduates have filed out. The 112th Kettering University commencement ceremony is now concluded. Congratulations, graduates.